had some up and downs throughout the season, taking a couple wins, taking a couple of losses, but really trying to recover themselves on the second half of this. UC Davis versus Missouri Baptist. It's going to be a battle for the West Coast. It's going to be a battle and a half. And to be honest, Besides, beyond, you know, just wanting to see a good game, I'm just excited to see these two teams really start to show what they've got because now is where you have to display everything. We've got one week left in the NECC, and you have got to prove to teams right here, right now, that, hey, playoff comes around, we're going to be looking out, and we're going to be taking names and numbers. So I got to imagine both these teams are coming in here with a little bit of ferocity. I really do think that this is going to be, uh, I don't know, this is an absolute shot back and forth battle. It's going to be an onslaught of offense but i'm interested Foof, what do you think is the key for teams like this who are coming in with you know not the hottest record but not the best record you know not the worst somewhere in the middle what's the key to victory for teams like this going into a first match i think the important thing is getting off to a hot start it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter where you are if you can score first and score early that allows you to start to dictate the game dictate the ball where it is and where you want to play so it's important to just set that tone a hundred percent. And I do think that both of these teams have the ability to do that, but I really do imagine that this is going to be a very influential first game. Sometimes that's kind of how the series goes though. You know, first game goes in favor of one team and they just start to run away with the thing. But on the other end, there could be also be some really, really good back and forth between these two teams. If this goes to game number five, I would not be surprised. Matter of fact, I'd be elated to see that as I really do think that this is a great battle of two teams who can absolutely go the distance. We're going to have to find out whether or not they can do so. Just getting everybody onto the pitch and making sure that they are all ready to go. And momentarily, we will have game number one. And if you guys want to make sure to keep up to date with everything that we're doing here at the NECC so that you can see every Down single there. game number Down one, there. make sure to check out all of our socials, exclamation point socials and chats that also give you everything that we've got. Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I believe we might have a Facebook or something similar. I'm not quite yep. sure. But make sure to go check out all of them because we can guarantee you that there will be updates on the NECC on all of our platforms and as playoffs start to come in we're going to have a lot of action Rocket League will not just be on Tuesday so make sure to keep your eyes peeled to see when we have those playoffs because teams like this that are hitting the pitch right now will be battling it out for that grand prize right now though they're just battling for the game five minutes on the clock both teams in the oh, have hit the pitch Missouri Baptist in the blue UCD in the orange good luck to both halves let's see what they've got well, right now, just both sides kind of getting that feeler off the kickoff as it looks like Kobe is trying to get something going early here. As now UCD has a chance. Tringer looking for the quick shot far post, but not able to get it going here. Chalky Milk, you love the name. You'll like to see it. But still able to turn that one around. It's up to Corby here at midfield. I like the read there on that sidewall. Him and Blue Phoenix colliding there. Tringer with a chance, throwing it off the backboard, but Tendo denying that one quickly. Right now, just that game one feeling out as we start to get that 30 seconds in. A little bit of back and forth here. They're not really trying to make too many large mistakes because they want to be very careful not to leave the first goal open. And, oh, it might be already here. Jockey Milk, though, gets bumped off the ball entirely. And I agree with you. I absolutely love the names in Rocket League. I, I think I'll go back to the story pretty much every single time that I can. One of the most prevalent teams in all of EU right now, which has probably the greatest name ever, is Godsmilla's team. Can you guess who's on that team? It might just be Godsmilla, and it's a phenomenal name, but it's not going to be as phenomenal as this shot. Tendo opens up the scoreline with a banger from the corner. Well, great job reading the miss that's there from Corbier, and it got caught just off of his car there, and Tendo being the opportunistic player that they are, just ready to pounce on any opportunity they have, and they automatically hop out of that 1-0 lead as MBU. He's going to do it again immediately. Okay, Tendo, welcome to the game. You kind of blink. You're wiping yourself off. What the heck just happened? We just saw the explosion. That wasn't the replay. That was a second goal. I'm going to have to keep my eye on Tendo for this game. So far, we have found our star-studded striker, and we're only a minute into this game. Plenty of time for an adjustment out of UC Davis, but unfortunately for right now, they're really not quite able to handle this offense. They're not quite able to handle Tendo. Oh, my oh. word. Oh, I thought he was going to fake him out in front of the net, but no, not quite. But regardless, Missouri Baptist look poised to keep scoring more. They are in control of the offense. They're in control of the pace of this game Beautiful. entirely. Oh, and they might have a third to show for it not quite on target but i'm liking the offensive effort so far foof well right now it's been those errant passes finding teammates in midfield looking for tendo again but he can't connect this time it has just been beautiful here 
almost just a dance from this blue side as MBU is putting on a clinic on how to be good on offense and then continue to pressure if you can't get on that ball. Tendo once again taking the shot the far post, but Chalky Milt denying it. Trengor, uh, that's not a good touch there, but Blue Phoenix not having the amount of boost needed. Stooley, though, has an open net, puts that in. 3-0 very quickly, and your Spartans are steaming right now. They're absolutely running away with this one already. Stoli immediately going to put that one straight on in. And honestly, at 3-0 to zero with three minutes left, I got a more match. And how many goals are they going to score in game number one? This could be a very deflating game in terms of uh, UC Davis just all around. They haven't really gotten anything together so far here. They're a very strong team, but unfortunately, they don't quite look like it yet. Struggling to get an offense together. And finally, they do get a chance, but no one dives on it uh, in the middle. They uh, might still get the goal without even touching it in front of the <laughs> net. But, you know, oh my, that's a bit of... Bit of a scary scenario, no but somehow Missouri will no walk way. away no with way. it. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was Stoli was going to put that one through, but no one said, who else but Tendo to score another goal? I mean, just, you know, it's, it was just the old gambit, just getting all their players up, acting like you don't have control of the ball in front of your net, and then flipping the field. It's just as easy as one, two, three, Bass, and they get their fourth goal here in game one. And oh my goodness, the Spartans are just popping off. There's a reason that these guys have been so good so far solid team all around and to be honest I'm not really seeing many gaps in their defense either a huge part of the reason they're so in control of this pitch is because when they go into their own half they are patient they are waiting for the opposition to challenge them so that they can have a second man behind who is prepared to continue the play it's all around good team play and the issue is for UC Davis here they're still a bit disorganized two players in front of the net no one wants to go for it they got to start using the communications a little bit better the comms right now feel like they might be dead because honestly there's a lot more passing plays that could have been developed that they're just missing right now. That's a beautiful rush from Tendo, though. He's got Blue Phoenix, though. He's going to take it himself near post. Wide open. Why not have yourself another? It is a buffet, and my man is just out there grubbing four goals on five shots. Have yourself a game one. He's got 100% goal. Uh, I'm not completion. I don't think it's the right word. It's a uh, goal. Participation. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Participation <laughs> at the moment. As he's four and one, he's got four goals, and the only other goal that has been scored, he's got the assist on. He's been a part of every single play. And Tendo is just starting to run away with this thing. Uh, forget Missouri at this point. It's just the Tendo show right now, as he's just putting on a clinic versus UC Davis. It might do it again. He's got another shot on target. Corbier is there, but Stoldy's going to try and run with this one, put some pressure, which pushes it out to Blue Phoenix. Blue, though, going to send it all the way across court from an odd pinch, but Tendo reads it perfectly goes up in the air wants the double touch but has not enough boost to do so but you can just see the amount of space tendo got in the air there it's really starting to look like uc davis is a bit too hesitant they really don't want to commit here because they've been punished so many times you start to get a little bit gun shy as you have leonidas like it himself tendo of the spartans has been absolutely peppering your backward and as i was kind of prepping for this game i was trying to figure out you know, how in the world is this team 7-0? What have they done so well? And you know what? Maybe it's just showings like this from Tendo that's kept them up top, but I don't think it's a one-player, a one-man band entirely. I think Stooley and I think that Blue Phoenix have some things to show us. Tendo's going to find another one there and make it 6 to nothing, trying to get a double hattie here. Uh, you know what? Maybe that's just a ride in the back off the hot player. Yeah, this is insane. Tendo is just running away with this thing. It's just kind of, I mean, at this point, what do you even do to stop this? It's just over and over again. They're pushed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all that they can do at this point. They're going to try what they can because the unfortunate truth of this matter is that it's really become a one-sided affair, no and I don't have much of an answer for how UC Davis slow this down. Maybe it's the fact that they need to start trying to shut down the eight chances entirely, pre-jump them, just get in their face, play a nuisance type of ball game. but as it stands right now, Missouri Baptists are so incredibly comfortable as they move around this pitch. Someone's got to slow them down because 30 seconds left in this game, they look poised. They could make a Brazil if they wanted to do it to themselves. Well, right now, Tendo is not allowing to let that goal in, trying to find a double hattie, but a nice dunk there. You talk about it, cast your curse. Maybe they were trying to set it up as Corbier finally gets one to go here for the Aggies, and they're going to find their way onto it, and a great job from them getting the goal here. And UCD probably not going to be pulling this one back, but hoping to try and push towards that game two, probably. 
And I do appreciate there's a little bit of banter going on in the chat. Tengor says, hey, we scored the last one, therefore the win is ours. So, you know, uh, the, flip the script, never mind. Missouri did not walk away with a win here. This is UC Davis. But jokes aside, actually, UC Davis finally getting a oh. little bit of spark of life, almost getting a really nice passing play on the other end. Besides that one goal we've seen from them, there hasn't been a lot in favor of them. They've really struggled to try and get momentum on the ball, or really just momentum anywhere on the pitch. And Missouri Baptist will take a very, convincing game number one as you mentioned they're undefeated on the season so we needed to see uc davis with a strong start this was uh it wasn't bad definitely not as strong as it needed to be though it certainly was a start for sure that they played the first game but unfortunately tendo got off and just i mean it was just this guy got off the bus throwing darts i mean seven shots five goals <laughs> it's pretty dang good bass i, I really say? don't know what else to say <laughs> Can't blame you, honestly. Tendo just put the team on his back, had more than almost double the team's combined score. It's kind of crazy how much he's just really all over the pitch, whether it's the saves, whether it's cutting down this defense and making sure that UC Davis is just completely frazzled the whole time they're on their back end. It's just well done. They're making UC Davis look incredibly uncomfortable on the pitch, and as a result, UC Davis are never really able to get momentum in their favor. I think there's plenty of time for the adjustments to happen, but as it stands right now, UC Davis really need to make the adaptations as the series goes on because if they play another game like this i just don't see it with any sort of key to victory to be honest well i think the most important thing is trying to set that tempo we didn't see very much physicality coming from the aggies and so we want to see if they can press that end a little bit maybe they can start to get nintendo's head a little bit move them around on like they don't want to move around not let them rotate in midfield not let them find those passes mid it's just up to them to dictate the game and not be dictated yeah, 100%. They've got to try and act like when they have the ball, they are controlling the pitch. That is something a lot of teams do struggle with, though. Unfortunately, they'll get into the scenarios where they have some sort of possession and don't know what to do with it. And, well, hopefully UC Davis can figure out what to do here in game number two. Five minutes on the clock. This is going to be a test. It is going to be a battle of UC Davis. And, unfortunately, Stoli looks like he wants to stunt right out the gate here. Almost getting a nice double touch, but, unfortunately, it's going to get shut down pretty quickly. And now we see some midfield presence start to develop that's something else i don't really feel like we saw in game number one either neither team was really trying to control that midfield it was kind of just fling it back and forth a ping pong match and then once you were in offense you were in offense once you were in defense you were in defense no one really controlling that midfield presence bit of a track meet here in game one you know just kind of going back and forth seeing who can race there and, and honestly it was all one-sided for the spartans and so tendo was kind of that maestro the kind of conductor of the pace and so you're wondering if they're going to set the tone here but right now it's just kind of sitting at midfield you're trying to see teams set that midfield trap and slow it down but the demo comes out here spartans now could be looking for it tendo trying to get a shot but corby are able to deny that one early shocky milk trying to flip the field but the only person down there is blue phoenix and tendo so that's not what you want to see trengor be careful here throwing it off your own backwards not very feasible tendo being patient waiting for it at midfield a nice job there passing it off from Blue Phoenix. They wanted to go for it, but Stooley now soft touch. Um, I think this might actually work. No, it won't. Corbier gets the save there. Some chaos unfolding on the back end, but the one thing I am liking is we're seeing a much more resilient UC Davis right now. They're definitely playing with a bit more ferocity on the field. They're trying to shut down these chances before they arrive. Speaking of which, Corbier gets in the way of Stoley and uh, just really messes up the shot entirely. That's what we needed to see. We needed to see them just getting in the way. If you can't necessarily out-mechanic the other team, if you can't out-rotate the other team, just get them angry. Just get in their way. Play a nuisance. Do what Corbier just did to jump in the way. Oh, but you need to make the touch or Stoli's going to punish. What an opening goal from Stoli as he goes cross-court with the double tap. I mean, Bass, they were technically in the way. They were between yeah. him and the goal. Boy, Stoli just said, I'm going to put this up on the top shelf. You're going to have to climb the ladder. And in the best term I can say it, he just decided he was going to be an athlete and put it as high as he possibly could and dare the defense to stop him. Just flying high, Jordan asks, and then buries it with that double touch. Oh, my goodness gracious. Good stuff so far here. It's been a very, very competitive game out of UC Davis, but unfortunately, they still haven't been able to slow down this Tendo? offense quite to the degree we would have liked. Tendo is not going to be able to follow that one up as he tries for a triple tap off the backboard, but unfortunately comes up just barely short, and it gives a chance for UC Davis to run this one the other way. Blue Phoenix and Stoli both up for this one. If someone somehow pulls it off, it would be incredible, but instead, it's continuing to stunt here. I 
appreciate one thing out of, uh, oh my no. word, no. no. <laughs> Bass, I think we're not watching Rocket League. We're watching the Blue Angels, okay? Every time you see one or two of these blue cars streaking across the field, leaving the trail and just dishing the ball to their teammates. I am absolutely speechless at how well coordinated that was. That was ridiculous. The Blue Angels probably can't coordinate that well. That was insane. <laughs> the actual passing plays that have been pulled off here from Missouri Baptist are absolutely stellar. The question is, is how on earth do you even defend that as UC Davis? You have to try to get in the way at some point. But to be honest, I don't think anybody ever expects a pass like that. That was just so incredibly well done. But, you know, we can't dwell on that. We've got to keep moving on to the future as there is two minutes left in this game. And UC Davis are not quite done yet. They are getting this offense together. They just need one good shot to open up this score line. But they do have some pressure. The one shot they have taken was a bit lackluster. And, uh-oh, no. they pushed up a bit too no. far. Midfield yeah, no. presence. Something we had been warning about for a long time, Foof, and now it gets punished. You start to cheat up. You start to smell that blood in the water. You finally get the pressure going, and then you throw it up to the backboard. I've got my third playing up. He's ready for it off the... Oh, no, that's Tendo. Oh, no, they've scored. Yikes, and they're going to have to deal with Tendo the entire rest of the night here. He is only getting warmer and warmer as time goes on. Already has two goals this game and might just pick up a third with this. No, Gorby, you're going to pop this one all the way out. And again, UC Davis, they may not have the most electric offense right now, but their defense is stellar. They are really locking down this back half a whole lot better than the first game. Blue Phoenix? Oh, come on. Tindo rolled out of the way. They knew Blue, Blue Phoenix was trying to come on. They tried to get him that goal here to make sure everybody eats here for the Spartans, but turned away at the end. Now it's up to Corbier and Chalky. Nice turn there. He's got one-on-one, -on -one, trying to get it past Tindo, but Tindo denies it once again, playing a little bit of defense here finally out of the Spartans. We're seeing a good three-man rotation out of everybody on both halves. And unfortunately, when you start to see this where both teams are playing with a little bit of reservation, then it just kind of goes to a stalemate. And unfortunately, in a stalemate like this, UC Davis is not going to benefit. They're down by three with a minute left. They don't want this going back and forth. They need to dominate right now. Ooh, and a touch like that might give them a chance. Tangor can't get the shot on target as Blue Phoenix gets in the way. So no 50 will even arrive. Again, it's more offensive pressure for UC Davis when it comes to that final shot they just cannot find the back of the net the Aggies are just knock knock knocking at this door it's eventually gonna come down but I don't know Bass if it's gonna be this game or the next but right now the Spartans are just firmly in control up three getting a demo is surely and now waiting in here no actually letting Phoenix get it able to get it off the sidewall like the soft touch he's gonna be looking for Tendo here that near post shot trying to find it for a third straight time but Corbier denies it Popped out to the center, though, and they're going to have to still try and hold on here as the pressure is surmounting. But at the same time, it's not really going to make much of a difference. We're only about five seconds away from the end of this game. All that UC Davis are really looking for is consolation goal to give them some confidence because, again, not as one-sided as the first. Still very much in favor of Missouri Baptist, though. Very much still in the driver's seat, though, Bass. They are comfortable. They got their hand on the shifter, and they are driving towards that cabinet. I got to tell you, the broom cabinet is open. They're reaching towards it. They have only one game left to do it. Yeah, and I'd honestly not be surprised. I hate to say it, but UC Davis are still not, excuse me, making the necessary adjustments here. A big part about it is, as we said, they get a lot of offensive pressure. They would spend periods of 10 to 30 seconds or more where they're on their opponent's half. But when it comes to the shot, it never arrived. Three total shots throughout the game versus their opponents who had 12 shots, outshot by four times the amount. And that's just not something you can do at this level of Rocket League. These guys are really good. They have a lot of offensive pressure. They're working well as a team. But when it comes to that final banger of a shot, it's usually pretty lackluster or it's not on target. So UC Davis need to be very careful with their offense. When they get chances, they need to do the most with them. The biggest thing is they had three solid opportunities. Two of them were turned away by a goalkeeper. Tindo had one, Stooley had the other. That third shot did not find the net, but it found the backboard. So that is the important miss there for them. That would have got them, I mean, within two technically, but they have to find a way to slow down this Spartan offense. And they have to find a way to make transition plays work for them because they've had some good ideas. They've had some good passing plays. Like you said, though, the execution at the end just leaves a little bit to be desired. And we're playing a team that is undefeated, that is hot, and that is revving towards this playoffs. You have to be perfect. 
And there's a chance that they can, but as we've said, it's going to be extremely difficult when you've got teams like Missouri Baptist who have three extremely lethal players. It's going to be pretty difficult. We're going to have to see if they can slow them down, though, as fake kickoff comes out. Tendo's on the line, and this could be a chance. They read it perfectly, but the shot is off target. UC Davis reading the fake kickoff absolutely perfectly, but are not able to capitalize. It's just the tail of the tape right now with Stooley and company now putting it off the backboard. Tringar not there, so he has to get up from the goal. Blue Phoenix had a chance, but it's turned away. Jockey Milk now on his side. The Aggies trying to get something going here, but once again, stonewalled by the man, the myth, the legend, Tendo, who's get 50 hard there by Corbier. Ooh, speaking of 50, though, this pinch is going to give a shot. Corbier misses it in front of the net, and it's another opportunity they do not capitalize upon. My head is in my hands right now. I'm just, I, I don't know what to say. It's, it's frustrating to watch from the outside in, but I can't imagine how frustrating it is for the players. Over and over again, they get shots to finally take a quick lead on Missouri Baptist, but when it comes to that execution, it's just not there yet. I mean, what is, what's, what is it better, to be good or to be lucky? And I think right now, MBU has this strange mix of both. They have Tendo on their squad. They have the goalposts on their squad. I mean, they have the ball bounces on their squad. Oh it's my. not going to go in. That's still not going to go in. It doesn't matter. Lady Luck has decided that it's going to take more than that. But Trindor says screw it all and forces it in himself. Oh, my word. UC Davis <laughs> deserved this tenfold over after so much offensive pressure for so incredibly long. They finally find the back of the net, and they do it at a great time. About a minute 20 into this game where no other goals have been scored, they take a much-needed lead. Oh, please don't give it away immediately. <laughs> oh, Corby are going to make a great save, and I thought all of my praise will be for naught. But luckily enough, UC Davis will continue to have a rock-solid defense. Tendo is trying to make a little bit of a liar out of you there as now he's trying to pull the trigger again from deep at midfield. The angle was there. The eye knew that that goal was open but could not get it off that octane good enough. Now it's up to Blue Phoenix. The pressure is on from the Spartans. But Trindorf's finding that early, putting it off the ceiling, finding Stooley, though. The soft touch off the tires a little bit too much, though. I think he was looking for Tendo to find it there. There's a chance, but here's the thing. UC Davis are starting to get in the way of these challenges, and it's getting a bit frustrating to Missouri Bath. As you can tell, their usual challenges are not the same anymore, but unfortunately, UC Davis aren't quite able to punish off this awkwardness. Oh, I thought they'd be able to for at least a moment, but as that one goes off the post and out, unfortunately, here comes the counterattack, and Missouri Baptists are going to go coast to coast, post to post. Usually when we say that, it means, you know, you go from one post to the other. This time it's from one post on one part of the field to the other post on the other part of the field. Psionics nerf the post next patch, please. They are too strong. That fourth and fifth defenders are too much for these players to handle. As the ball gets flipped back once again, getting into a little bit of a tennis match right now here, Vass. Corbier trying to get a 50 now, but it's past him. But Tringor, very aggressive. I like the speed coming out here from UC Davis. The Aggies have started to pick it up more and more as their night has gotten shorter and shorter. Tendo now trying to find some control here, but another solid 50 from the Aggies. Chalky has to make a big save and he can't get to it. What? What? How? How is that what opens up the scoreline here? I have no After rock solid, literally <laughs> impeccable defense out of UC Davis for about three minutes straight, the softest shot from Blue Phoenix just throws the defense off entirely. Maybe that was the goal of that shot, was just be so, you know, lackadaisical oh, with it that know. the defense would have expected a banger. And I mean, honestly, I'm not really sure what happened there. All I know is that UC Davis have given away a lead they desperately needed to hold on to. And now with a minute 45 left, they have got to find an answer to this offense. Well, right now the Spartans, you know, they're not very ferocious. They're not very quick, but they've done enough to tie this game up and try and put this away. Stooley and Blue Phoenix now two on one opportunity. The demo attempt coming through. That's just going to be, should be a quick pass. No, he lost control of it. Oh my goodness. The three on one is turned away by the Aggies, but somehow the ball goes back. Now it's up to Corbier, picking up the boost in time. Blue Phoenix trying to 50, but it's turned around. Tindo looking for Shu. <laughs> it's going off the ceiling. <laughs> What? <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I'm trying to wrap my head around what we're watching right now. Maybe Missouri Baptist has decided if we're going to score, it's got to be a banger because they just didn't like the first goal. I, I don't really know, but a midair pinch from two teammates on the ceiling is probably not going to be all that beneficial, especially considering it's a tie game with about a minute left. However, Tendo is determined to try and make me eat my words one more time. Pass out to Blue Phoenix. We get denied by Chalky Milk. But it's another Missouri offense. If they can score here, they can get this done before overtime. But so far, they're turned away, and it's back to midfield once again. UC Davis, they've had a really solid defense. I'm scared to say that, though, because last Don't time I started it. complimenting them, yeah, yeah everything <laughs> kind of went to hell in a handbasket. Well, it was just the granny shot, you know, the double underhanded that you never expect to work, and it just fell its way in. But right now, Tringor trying to get a 50. That means it's kept up for Chalky, who's coming in, but Blue Phoenix denies it. Corby are now trying to find something here for the Aggies. This is an important one for them, but, you know, <laughs> still lead passing it to Trengor. Uh, an interesting tactic, to say the least, on defense, but now Tendo passing it to Stooley. Now it's a two-on-two -two opportunity, but a good read from Chalky Milk this time, keeping it up. Blue Phoenix now has four seconds to push it off that sidewall. Tendo trying to catch it. No, we're going to go to OT. In overtime, this is where it is make or break for these teams. For Missouri Baptist, they want to try and shut this one down right here, right now. Just sweep this entirely. Meanwhile, for UC Davis, they're trying to keep the night alive. And I believe that they can. They just need to get a good shot. Wait, uh, that... Huh? You know what, Bass? They found the perfect shot just from the wrong team. I... <laughs> Literally, I am so incredibly confused. I think Stoo <laughs> as Stooley backflips, I, I'm assuming his goal was to try and pop it to the left and off the backboard. We'll never know, though, because UC Davis wraps this one up very quickly into overtime. I, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, I got no words for this one, Foof. I'm going to be honest. I'll leave this to you, brother. I'm trying to still wrap my head around this a little bit. The only tactic I can put in my mind is that they felt like they were faster. And so the idea is that you'll take the shot from your opponent and miss. The issue is once you do all these training packs, once you do all these things, sometimes you're shooting on the blue goal. You just forgot that you were the blue car and ended up putting it in and giving game what should have been a sweep over to UCD. I that's the only thing I can try and come up with. I, I have no other. Listen, that's the best explanation we can get here. I appreciate, I'll take that one, man. I don't really know. This was uh, this was chaos unfolding all around, and I, I really don't know what's going on in the pitch here. I gotta I gotta hope that this next game is gonna be a little bit more slowed down, but we're gonna have to find out. We're taking a quick second to switch up the servers because some of the, one of these teams is located a little bit more in the central U.S., so they'd like to go to an east server to possibly finish this one off and. Unfortunately for Missouri, this was a chance for them to really put a statement on at 3-0. and zero. They could just show, hey, no matter what the team, we are invincible. Unfortunately, they've now kind of left the door open a little bit. If UC Davis can run with this momentum, there's a chance they could try and take a couple more games. Well, it's just going to be up to whoever dictates this next game. Um, plain and simple... MPU took their foot off the gas. They were they were lack they were a little bit lacking in how aggressive they were, but it wasn't as if they backed off entirely. They were trying for some things. They were having fun, which is it, that's an important thing, you know. And I think the comms were very uh, not as serious, but very uh, jovial and very good at the time. And so it's up to them to pick it back up. I wonder if they can have that switch to turn it back on because the best teams have the ability to come af come off of a bad game or come off of a disappointing end and turn it back around. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things is resiliency, the ability to keep that mental fortitude no matter where you are playing. It's one of the most important things in Rocket League, no matter what level you're at. You could be bronze two or you could be, uh, you know, top 100. As long If you don't have resiliency, there is no way that you're going to be able to win a game. So this is going to be a huge, huge test here for Missouri Baptist. They just took a loss, which was, we're going to call it unfortunate. I'm not really sure what other word I can use to describe it. Strange. but. Yeah, sure, that one's too. I mean, it's a strange, <laughs> odd, unbelievable, absolutely abysmal. I have no idea what to call it. But what I will call it is a loss nonetheless and a chance for them to get some redemption. Missouri Baptists do not want to play another game like that. They need to try and finish this series right here, right now. Otherwise, they are leaving the door open for UC Davis to start this comeback. And as we said, this is really not a team you want to try and give a comeback to. You're undefeated right now. You want to keep that streak alive going into playoffs. Maybe they're trying to get some close series in before the playoffs, Bast. You ever think about that? The coach said, hey, let's try and get this one out, sweat it out a little bit earlier, you know, the Giga Brain tactics, the 300 IQ. But no, just the best teams will put away teams that they're better than. And so we're looking for Tindo and company to step up and finish it. We're 
the Aggies did exactly what they're supposed to do. They saw an opportunity, they forced the error, and they made it stick when it counted. That's exactly what it is sometimes. Sometimes it's just a stalemate back and forth, and the first one to crack is the one to lose. And, oh, we're going to see if Missouri Baptist do it once again. They're going to probably try to play a little bit more controlled. The chaos of the last game did not benefit them in the very end. And, oh, it's already looking a little bit chaotic right now. Tendo, that was not the most perfect touch, but luckily enough, the counterattack is going to be quick, and it will be fierce, but Stooley can't quite get the shot on target. A great opportunity, no, but... Home. No, it was going to go the other way in open net, but no... Nobody takes a shot on target. I believe Trenborn took that away from Corbier. That could have been the opening goal for UC Davis, but instead they're going to have to restart the offense and try again. That double commit was looming large there for the Spartans. We had two players commit, and then unfortunately the Aggies, nothing friendly about that fire. They're not able to take advantage of it, but now Tendo and company, the Spartans looking for a counterattack. Trencor, though, a nice 50 there, putting it technically on, making Stooley make the big save here on that back half. Chalky Milk now looking for a teammate, but a nice touch from Stooley keeps it to the Spartan side. Now a little bit of a 2 on 2 play here, maybe, but Trengor just kind of snuffing that one out, not allowing the pressure to go. But Tendo trying to find it. There it is, middle of the field, waiting for Stooley to collect. This is something we haven't seen in quite some time. UC Davis with a little bit of a shaky defense. They hadn't been like this many times before, but as two of them are on the backboard, neither of them can get a touch, and it's popped on in. 1-0 it becomes in favor of Missouri Baptist, and we're starting to see them take control of this game again. The question is, is whether or not they continue to score. They have a chance to just put this one too far out of hand. We saw them do it in game number one. If they do it again here in game number, oh my word, four, they might be able to wrap up the series. That was a monstrous flick. That was a very good angle as Trengor now has to make the save. That's a big bump, but even a worse. Oh, no. The <laughs> Another own goal coming out here. Tendo putting it on. I don't know. I don't know, Bass. Uh, I'm just going to say one for one. That's all I'm going to really say here at this point. They're just kind of giving out a, a, a own goal a team. Uh, maybe they've got some sort of punch card that they just kind of trade back and forth every once in a while. I don't it, know. Dude. I, I have no idea, man. If you've got a better theory than I, I mean, listen, whatever it might be for these own goals, if there is an explanation, I, I'd love to know what it is. Well, right now, Trengor trying to break that trend as Corbier had a chance there trying to twist and turn that octane in the air, but couldn't find it. Now, Tindo with both of his teammates off to the left, throwing it up. I don't like that idea because the comps haven't been the cleanest seemingly from this MBU side. And so if you throw it between both teammates, you don't know who's going to go up for it. But Tendo being that stalwart there on defense where they've been the pressure on offense, doing a good job clearing it out. But right now, Corbier and this Aggie squad are just trying to strike back here. They're trying. It's, again, the same issues we saw in a couple previous games, though. A lot of offensive pressure, but no real shots to show for it. They spend a lot of time in their opponent's half, but when it comes to that lethal strike that gives them a goal, it just never really arrives. Once again, more offensive pressure here, but instead, Chalky Milk will clear it out for his opponents. Not quite sure what the plan was there. I'm unfortunately thinking UC Davis might be getting a little bit panicked here. They look a little nervous as they, walk, as they work around the pitch. Well, that was just trying to keep it off of the Spartan side, and Chalky hit a little bit too hard and ended up just doing what they wanted to do in general. But now Stooley trying to backflip it there and find Tendo, but Corbier throwing up the Trengor. Trengor trying to find it off of that backboard, but unable to get it, though. Chalky Milk has it past one, but not able to get it past Tendo. Tendo waiting for the sidewall, got it to fall there, has a teammate, but a solid 50 from Corbier means the Aggies have a little bit of counterattack opportunity. Chalky Milk with the least favorable touch I think he had another another idea in mind but couldn't get it going there Ooh, and unfortunately his ideas are going to go very much awry as he's going to scramble into the back end Blue Phoenix drops this to the center but Trengor gets a great clear out and will give a little bit of time for his team to breathe but only momentarily as Corbier has to make yet another save Missouri Baptists are unrelenting no. right now it's a whole lot of offensive pressure but they still have not taken that clean of a shot they've got to be careful here UC Davis lets in one more goal that could be the nail in the coffin they've only got a minute 30 and still need to make back two goals uh, my heart my heart was pounding there, that little bit of a whiff in front of the net as Tindo was just lurking. <laughs> just a predator waiting in the bush there, but not able to strike this time. The Spartans now, just I'll be honest, they're playing possession ball. They're not forcing the error. They're not forcing the issue. They're just keeping control. And you know what? Oh Screw all that. Silly's just going to take the whole way. I think that's their second here, just putting it up there and saying, please stop me if you can. 
I mean, game one was all Tendo. Since then, it's been all Stooley. Stooley has absolutely dominated on offense with some ridiculous double touches, some ridiculous shots all around. And honestly, that's just the cherry on top. And it's probably going to give them the series as well. One minute remains here. And unfortunately for UC Davis, after being shut out for the first four minutes, I just don't see them getting enough goals here within the small amount of time. Oh, and Tendo trying to stunt as well. Heard me mentioning that he was the MVP in game one and not game four. And now wants to try and gun for that game for MVP. Blue Phoenix, though, wants his own shot as well. Passes it out to the center. Stooley is waiting. Pops it high. Tendo wants the rebound. But really, all they're doing right now is wasting valuable time. It's been 20 seconds off the clock. And Chalky Milk, despite getting into the offensive third, really doesn't have enough power. UC Davis do not have the time anymore to try and make this comeback. And this was just incredibly well played all around out of Missouri Baptist. GG's incredible adaptations as the series went on. Well, the Spartans come out and do what they need to do. They're going to put them away in four instead of the three as Chalky Milk and company are trying to get something going. So GG is definitely indeed. But now Tringor trying to get something going. Forgets the ball. That's kind of important. You need that one there. Uh, there's no one in the net. Stooley, though, walking the dog all the way home. It's going to be Tindo taking it off the touch there. Tendo just decides, hey, I kind of want this one, man. Listen, I need to bump my stats up just a little bit, and uh, I'm not really quite sure what happened in front of the net, but what we can get, what we can guarantee is that it's a goal nonetheless, and it's a win for MBU here at Missouri Baptist University, putting on a very impressive fourth game. And I will say, after the first game, I kind of expected this one to go entirely in favor of Missouri Baptist. UC Davis really did put on a good fight throughout these four games. Well, they are a team that has played the past two, two weeks that have gone to five games. They know how to stick with teams, and they know how to make it run for the long way. So these guys can and will make the games run long and will force you to make those good arrows and make those good plays. But unfortunately, MBU just came out, and they looked like the better team, and they proved it today, staying undefeated series-wise. They did drop one today, but in the end, MBU did what they had to do, and GGs are thrown in the chat. I thought that we would never get to the end of that game. You're mentioning <laughs> they had to, you know, play patiently and keep this one going long. They really did keep the end of that game long, keeping the ball up for longer than I can even count. So very well done to MBU, very well done to UCD. It was a tense back and forth, a great battle between the two teams. But at the end of the day, there can only be one winner, and that is going to be Missouri Baptist University, who played really well. Honestly, there's nothing else to say besides the fact that they played well on offense and on defense. Aside from a couple of, uh, we'll call it just, random errors i have no other words to describe what we had seen really a very very Tactical solid day miscues. yes that perfect absolutely <laughs> abs beautiful you should copyright that honestly it's a absolutely phenomenal way to describe it as really there there is no other way to say it it was still a very good game out of mbu nonetheless well definitely and i gotta say the ucd i, I was worried that they were going to come in and play too loose and in game one, I, th I thought I saw that from them. They were going to push too hard, try and make too many things, or not make enough plays. Well, they got jumped on early. They started to retract. We talked about how trigger shy they seemed. And so when they stepped it up in game three, you're like, okay, maybe this is how it goes. And they started to harden that defense. So this is a team that that is something you can build on. You'll go and watch this film and be disappointed with how it ended. But you have a lot of good up there, and you got to see a lot of good things that you do. So I'm hoping that they can continue to build on that. And for MBU, I will say you just have to be careful. You did just put that on film. And a lot of these teams that are looking to gun you down in playoffs, they just saw that. Yeah, that's the thing is a lot of other teams here are not going to let you make errors like that and not punish immediately. One of the biggest things we saw out of MBU is that they would fall asleep for maybe even a half a second where they weren't necessarily playing to the best of their abilities. And all of a sudden, UC Davis would strike. They wouldn't necessarily get a goal every time, but they would put on a lot of pressure. So the big difference is, is wait until they find a team who's not only going to put pressure, but they're going to take a shot from their back third. They're going to go all the way across court and put it right into your net. So they've got to be careful and any sort of vulnerability is something teams will be studying and watching to try and take advantage of. So we're going to have to find out if teams can do that in the future. For now, though, Foof, thank you for coming through, my friend. This was a blast having you. Everybody, please give a huge shout out to Foof in his first week here at the NECC. It was a blast having you on cast. You absolutely killed it, my friend. And i got to say, you did it while looking incredibly snazzy as well. <laughs> I appreciate it. I was tickled to death to get the message that I got a chance to be up here. Then I got to come back at the end of the night and work with you. I got to work with Lars. I got to hang out with Novanta, Lychee. Um, so many great people behind the scenes. So I was so excited and I hope I can do this again. I want to thank
thank you guys for coming out. I want to thank you guys at home for watching. I hope you guys had such a great time. And this is only week eight. We have another week coming up, so make sure you come back. Yeah, absolutely. There is more action to be had. There's more chances for these teams to show what they are made of because we are this close to getting the playoffs. So if you want to keep up to date with everything, like we said, make sure to hit that follow down below. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everything that we have got. And for now, though, that's going to be that. Thank you, everybody who came through here tonight. Huge shout out to all of you guys in the stands who are watching this one at home. We really do appreciate it. Massive shout out to our director of esports, Caleb Gluby, as well as our commissioner, Jacob Van Ryan. And as well, shout out to everybody else who makes this possible. When we go out, you're going to have a couple of words from the people who get this or who make this possible every single week. So please stick around for that. But for now, that is the end for Foof and I. GG's well played. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next time. Have a great rest of your night. Hey, man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Uh, that is comfortable.